and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and a welcome to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida, as we have a big night of action in store for you, brought to you by DeBella Entertainment and Seminole Warriors Boxing in association with the Seminole Tribe of Florida. This bout in the ring also made possible by Gary Shaw Productions and is sanctioned by the WBC President Jose Suleiman Supervisor Avel Gonzalez. Introducing to you our three judges scoring from ringside, all from the state of Florida. We have Michael Pernick, Mike Ross, and Rocky Young. Introducing our third man of the ring, our referee in charge of this bout, Tennis Asimenios. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Welterweight World Championship Eliminator. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gray trunks with blue and red trim, fighting out of Houston, Texas, by way of Carolina, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 153 pounds, his record 30 wins, two losses and one draw with 27 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the former IBF welterweight champion of the world, introducing Kermit Sintron. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks with silver trim, fighting out of Coachella, California, by way of Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico. His weight, 153 and one half pounds. A winner of 11 straight bouts by way of knockout. He is undefeated in his professional campaign with a record of 15 wins, no losses, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated El Perro, Alfredo Angulo. And the referee in charge now to give instructions. Once again, Telis Asimenios. Gentlemen, you have received instructions in the dressing rooms. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Your belts are great. Shake hands, good luck, and God bless. Cintron's trainer, the respected and experienced Ronnie Shields, told us that if plan A is not, is not working, they have plans B and C to go to. The real danger for Cintron is, what if plan A is working? And Angulo is still there still coming to get him. That will be decided over 12 rounds as we get set for Angulo and Cintron. Here on Boxing After Dark. Cintron said the fact that they had eight full weeks of camp, been through mental and physical hell, Says he's in the best shape that he's ever been. He added Brian Caldwell as a strength and conditioning coach two fights ago. This is his third fight with Ronnie Shields. Bob Papa, Max Kellerman, Lennox Lewis, Hollywood, Florida, HBO's Boxing After Dark. Double header for you just underway. Andre Berto and Juan Urango in the main event. Citron's doing a good, throwing his good jab out there, which is important. What, he, what I like him to do a bit more, we step into it. And he, listen, he stepped into it. The body shot by Cintron. Cintron's boxing very well so far, and it's important to remember, he's a one-punch knockout artist, Cintron, not just a good athletic boxer. 14 of his 27 knockouts have come within the first two rounds. This is the 153rd professional round for Cintron, the 53rd professional round for Angulo. <laughs> Measured approach from both as Cintron tries to establish his jab.
You know, remembering that this is the first round, is a feel-out round for both fighters. And Citron seems to be leading the way right now. He's throwing a lot of jabs. Lennox, one thing Citron and his people told us was we need to keep this fight in the middle of the ring. I know it's early. Good counter right hand by Angulo, but he has done that. He has keep, kept it in. One thing he has to remember, I think that was a wake-up shot by Angulo. When he throws his combinations, make sure that his hands is up. A Angulo is not hard to hit, and he is a pressure fighter, but he's an excellent boxer. You see him able to land punches, accurate punches, to a more athletic, longer fighter with a good jab like Cintron here in the first round. And right hand right to the face by Angulo. Backs up Cintron. Angulo will take two punches to give one punch. That's, that's how tough this guy is. He's not afraid to take a couple punches, but he'll give right back. That's the dog in him. Final minute and a half of this first round. Some very good work by Angulo. And there's the bell to end round number one. Both men had their spots. Angulo landed some harder punches. He's slow, slow. Come on, throw your jab a bit more, and don't bring your left down. And when he's off to the side, he's off to the side to throw the uppercut right through the middle. You saw that, right? Yeah, lively, lively. When he does that same thing, you know what you have to do. Step to the side and put, punch in. But look, stay busy with the jab and feign him. When he's coming in, drop down and shoot that uppercut, okay? There you go. All right. Let's go to work, man. Let's go to work. That was a good round. So good first round for both Cintron and Angulo. Handed a stat by CompuBox of Angulo 17 connects. Lennox, nine came in the last minute. So maybe Angulo's power punches outdid the good work of Cintron in the first two minutes of the round. Well, you know, that's what I noticed in that first round. Citron got off to a good start, but he let it, he let it slip away from him a little bit, and Angulo came back a little bit. Interesting. Both these guys started boxing late. Cintron introduced to the sport at 19, Angulo at 17. But Angulo, boxing to him seems as though it's second nature, whereas Cintron seems to need to take a second before he makes his move, like he has to think first. Growing up in Reading, Pennsylvania, he was a wrestler at William Tennant High School, talking about Cintron. In fact, received a scholarship, but the school that he was going to dropped wrestling, and his uncle, Benjamin Serrano, had done some boxing, so Kermit decided to get involved in this sport, turned pro in 2000. Kermit cannot throw one punch against Angulo. He has to throw a combination, and then keep his hands up when he's coming out of a combination. Now that's one of the big questions that Max just brought up that it feels like Cintron for a split second has to think about what he's doing in there where it flows better for Angulo. Ronnie Shields and the Cintron can't think that they've gotten that straightened up. I mean Cintron and the comparisons to his idol Julio Cesar Chavez are obvious the calmness and the, the this consistency with which he applies his craft his ability to place punches it, as though it's going in slow motion for him in the heat of the battle in those exchanges is really extraordinary for a guy who got a late start in boxing has not allowed himself to get caught against the ropes which is a no-no according to his camp against Angulo Citron needs to throw some punches to stop Angulo some a li little more power punches you know his jab is not too much power behind it and that's what he needs to really stop this man with he needs to step down and push that jab out snap it out good right hand by Angulo I mean, what's happening here 
is that Angulo's outboxing Cintron. Yes, he's coming forward. Yes, he's getting hit a bit because he doesn't have a great defense. But who's landing the more solid punches more consistently? Yeah, to be fair, Cintron's trying to work off of Angulo coming in. As you can see, he's turning. He's doing the old uh, Jersey Joe walk out there. Goes to one side, then he throws a, a punch, then he throws another punch. You turn it away from the punch is good. Keep, keep your head moving like On that, June right? 13th, welterweight title is Miguel Cotto defends his title at Madison Square Garden against the always tough Joshua Clotty. Then one week later, heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko puts his title belts on the line against British bomber David Hay. Klitschko versus Hay will air live from Germany at 4.45 p.m. Eastern time and re-air that same night at 10 p.m. All right, so lively, lively. Jab, use the jab. Jab, jab, straight right hand. Jab, jab, straight right hand. And the left hook, don't throw it in the swing. Okay. Get set for the start of round number three between Alfredo Angulo and Kermit Sintron. Angulo in the black trunks with the silver trim. Sintron is the kind of fighter we saw in the Martinez fight where he can be buoyed by a sudden turn of events. When he felt he was cheated, uh, when he thought it was a headbutt, not a knockdown. Good right hands. He Great. really, he, he became re-energized, and here, he's a real puncher, as you can see, and Angulo does cut, and so, should something like a cut open, you can expect Cintron to fight with renewed vigor. Lennox, didn't it seem like in the last round, although the fight was in the middle of the ring, that it was Angulo almost beating Cintron in his own game? Well, you know, he, Citron was allowing Angulo to give him too much, move in too close to him, and Citron was giving up a bit too much room and allowing him to come in. Yeah, that's what I really noticed in the last round. Citron's got good boxing ability. When he uses it, he, he looks great. the right hand to the head of Angulo. Angulo picks off the next two-punch combination. There's a lot to like about Cintron, as you mentioned, Lennox, including his punching power. And the knock on him recently has been, well, the question is, does he have the heart to not only compete but to succeed at the elite level. He's going to have a chance to show that tonight against Angulo. Well, he's doing the right things right now. He's giving Angulo a lot of angles. He's moving. He's, he's being fast. And he's throwing some good combinations in there. And he's in there with a guy who's not going to stop coming at him. According to Compu Box, Cintron has outlanded Angulo in this round 21 to 10. With 45 seconds. Oh. Good left hand by Cintron. Angulo was hurt by that punch and lifted his back leg off the canvas. Good rhythm for Kermit Cintron here in round three against Alfredo Angulo. See, Kermit looks like he's winding up for that right hand right now. He's trying to line up for that right hand because he realizes this is the punch that's going to hurt Angulo. And he's ca caught Angulo a couple times with that right hand, so he's definitely trying to land it in this round. And here is the questions. Here they'll start to be answered. He unloaded some savage shots at Angulo that rocked him to his shoes. Angulo's still coming at him. How will Cintron react to that? Hey, come on. Let him go. Let him go. Very disciplined, sharp round for Kermit Cintron in round three. Son, you must throw more punches. You're just throwing one, and he's counterpunching. I don't want him to do that. Come on, it's too easy. You gotta be more aggressive. When you're in front of him, when you're in front of him, you gotta move your head, move your head and throw the jab. When he's throwing the counter punch, my friend, you gotta be go there, go there on the inside.
And here is Citron doing some good movement. Coming back with the left to the body and then coming back with the left to the head. Oh, okay. Stay away from the ball for me. Try and get that. Good start for Kermit Cintron. I got the water. I got it. Here through the first three rounds of this 12-round bout against Alfredo Angulo. Can he keep it up? Angulo in the toughest test of his career. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. Three to nothing. 30 to 27, Kermit Sintron. I tell you, Bob, I'm really impressed with Kermit Sintron doubling up on that left jab. Nice left hook there by Kermit Sintron. I mean, he's had a really good fight. He's backing up, and Gulo's walking him down the entire fight. Okay. Okay. I tell you what. That was a low blow, okay? I've okay. seen a definite okay. difference in this round with Sintron. He seems a little more relaxed. I feel he feels a little better in this round. And, you know, he feels good because he's landing his punches, especially that sweet left hook he's, he's throwing right now. He's going upside at Gulo's head in this round. <laughs> <laughs> so three zip, huh, Harold? Yeah, three to nothing, 30 to 27. Based on, you know, he's doubling and tripling that left jab constantly. Landing enough left jabs to win those first three rounds. Three to nothing, Cintron. All right. That's and Harold's scorecard at this point. I think that Could make Angulo case won at one. least one of the first two rounds, maybe both of them. But Cintron has oh, clearly taken oh, over and the fight. Yeah. Hurt. yeah, big right hand to and the ear. And Gulo is in trouble. He's back on his heels. Let's see what Cintron can do. Cintron lands another right hand, and Angulo holds on. This is where Cintron needs to take his time, set it up once again. Set it up once again. He's got plenty of time, which he's doing. Cintron looks like he's cut over the left eye, perhaps. Yes, he is. Couple of thundering right hands. Oh. Great combination by Cintron as he steps in and rocks back Angulo. I mean, these are bombs from a real puncher. Angulo's brought out the boxer in Cintron. And so far, to Cintron's great credit, he was not discouraged early by whatever success, whether he oh, won the rounds oh, or not, go. that Angulo had in the early, in the first two rounds. And Lennox, you saw Cintron there. He felt his back against the ropes, and he immediately walked Angulo off the ropes. And this is something he's been practicing in the gym, and he's doing it in the ring. A couple right on the belt line, and Angulo go, caution. Go, go. So some thunderous right hands here in round number four by Kermit Cintron, oh. and he rocks back Angulo again. And Gulo's taking some mean right hands to the face. I wonder how many he can take. We've seen his ability to absorb these kind of shots against Gutierrez here on Boxing After Dark about a year ago. But Gutierrez is not the overall package as a fighter that Cintron is. Well, you can make the case this is the best opponent that he's faced. And I think you win that argument. Well, different opponents bring out different things. Different styles bring out different things from a boxer you know you may be training for one thing and all of a sudden you throw a combination it's, oh it's working for you so you continue to do you throw that combination mom rebecca for alfredo and gulo very concerned right now with the way the first four rounds hey, have gone for her son you don't have to get in a slow match with him you beat him just boxing him on the outside using that good jab he can't take that jab okay you're too busy for it. that cut ain't nothing Okay? You ain't got nothing, you're not cut. Okay, you're not cut, all right? Listen, you ain't got nothing up there. Okay, look, look. And here we're gonna see some right hands by Citron. That's the, that's the punch that actually hurt Angulo. And here we're gonna see it from a different angle. I don't know if it caught him on the ear or the chin, but it definitely wobbled him. And Angola showed good composure there. Didn't panic, kept his hands up, and dealt with it. Well, Angulo has handled some big shots from Cintron. We know that Angulo's tough. Can Cintron remain disciplined as we embark upon round number five and stick to his game plan? You heard Ronnie Shields say, keep boxing him. He can't deal with your jabs. Left to the chest by Angulo. Lex, what could Angulo do to change the temperament of this fight? Because right now it's Cintron that's controlling the distance and the spacing. 
Well, the double jab, right now he's pawing with that left hand and he's trying to find the dip distance. But that double jab will bring him into the distance where he can land his punches. There he goes, pawing again, pawing again. This is to Citron's advantage by doing this because while he's pawing, Citron can throw that right hand over his jab anytime. Remember, there's some questions about Angulo missing flights getting here. He told us he was a little under the weather, went to see his doctor, took a flight in late, wound up staying in Boca two nights ago with the parents of his promoter away from all the boxing people here in Hollywood. Right hand to the ear, right hand to the face, scored by Cintron. And Gulov says, give me more. Careful what you wish for. See, Angulo doesn't like the Citron, the fact that Citron's moving around the ring because it, he's finding it difficult to catch him. He, he would rather a fighter that stands in front of him and throws shots. See, Citron's allowing Angulo to miss, but he needs to come back with shots. Once he misses, let him, let him pay. I don't know why Angulo's left arm is below his waistline, right? Or it was a moment ago. With a right hand like Cintron. L unless he wants to counter the right hand, Lennox. Don't know. Cintron starts that sequence off with a jab. Cintron sitting in front of Angulo, which is not the best place to be. Citron's gotten a little lazy here with the jab in the last minute and a half. Can Angulo take advantage of it? Well, you know, I think he's taking this round off. Hey, that is the end of round number five. Well, on Thursday, gloves, not guns in Deerfield Beach in association with U.S. Amateur Boxing. It's a new program designed to offer kids boxing classes. Andre Berto was there introducing kids to the sport of boxing, and this program will give children safety tips on how to resolve conflicts. And we'll see Andre Berto coming up tonight in our main event. Max, you were able to take part in the program at the Deerfield Beach Fire and Rescue Station House. Great job by Berto with the kids, huh? Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's from this area, and he's a product of programs like this, like most many or most American fighters are top American fighters. We've got a good one here through five rounds between Alfredo Angulo and Kermit Sintron. Angulo landed his 24 punches in the last round, according to CompuBox, and it's 27 for Sintron. Round number seven underway. Sintron showed something early in this fight where when it looked like it was going to be the kind of fight Angulo wanted, Sintron maintained his poise and reimposed himself in the fight. At least I felt. Harold thought that he won all the rounds. Again, he's going to have to do that here because Angulo had a much better fifth round than he'd had previously in the fourth. Let's see if Sintron goes back to that jab, kind of controlling the distance, which has been very beneficial to him in this fight. And last round was a wilder, wilder kind of brawling round. The kind of round that Angulo wants this fight to turn into. Cintron doing a pretty good job of reestablishing the distance with the jab here. According to the CompuBox numbers, this is the most power punches Angulo's been hit with in the six fights that CompuBox has tracked already 83 connects in the power category this is only the second time that angulo has ever been in the sixth round in his third pro fight won a split decision and he went 10 rounds with andre Tsurkan in temecula last year but normally he's done by now
and Gula looks a bit winded. You know, this this could be attributed to the fact that he had to make weight. You really, there's, there's still six more rounds to go. You really do get a sense when you meet with the fighters the day before the fight, how they appear before they weigh in. And Angulo looked, truly did look drained. He looked low energy, he feel, felt low energy, and though his, you could see his abs are showing and he's in shape, he looks drawn. As you mentioned, Lennox. Right, left combination from Cintron. Angulo does something where he bends down and throws the jab. And he, st he throws about three jabs when he's down there. That's a perfect opportunity for Citron to throw that right hand. One on the left ear of Angulo. Citron feeling a little confident. Shuffled the feet, threw a shot over the top. Good step in left hook by Citron. Angulo counters. It's not just that Cintron is giving Angulo movement and angles. It's uh, conventional wisdom in boxing is that that's the way to beat Angulo. But he's doing it with real steam on his punches. I mean, this is a boxer who is clearly hurting Angulo with these punches off the jab and the counters. And a fight high 35 connects for Cintron, according to CompuBox in round number six. Well, Kermit Cintron has done a very good job so far in this fight of uh, staying busy. You see that he has landed 164 punches. 90 of them have been power shots. He's been busier than Angulo. As we take a look at HBO's punch zone and take a look at where he's done the damage. I mean, look at the shots to the head that he has been able to compile. He's worked the body a little bit, but Lennox... The right hand to the ear and right hands to the chin have been very effective against Angulo. And, you know, if you look on Angulo's face, he's got a little puffiness around that, that side. When you get hit 68 times in the face by Cintron, <laughs> you shouldn't have a face anymore. So we begin round number seven, scheduled for 12. Let's check in with Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, 59, 55. Five rounds to one, Kermit Cintron. Bob, I tell you, I love the way he's, he's working that jab. I mean, he's backing up. There's no question that Angulo's the aggressor. Angulo's stop, walking stop. him down, but Angulo can't get into his stop, game. Stop. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not the Alfredo Angulo we're used to seeing where he takes over the fight and lands vicious right hands. This time, he's clearly being stop. outboxed. He had a nice fifth round, Angulo. He won the fifth round. But other than that, it's been the Kermit Cintron doubling, tripling the jib, and then dropping that right hand down on Angulo. Five to one, Cintron. All right, Clemente Medina in between rounds in the corner go, of go boys, Angulo right. told him, you've lost all six rounds. You're being outworked. We've heard that before. I might beg to differ, but they're trying to get Angulo on track. Lennox, so far, Cintron has maintained a disciplined posture. He's used a jab, kept the fight in the middle there. He's sticking to his plan. Right, and, you know, this is, he's bringing out the boxer in him, and he's doing a great job boxing. And this is all he has to do against Angolo is just box. Box, he's a natural boxer. He's got good boxing movement. I would love him to uh, straighten out that right hand a bit. It's coming a bit wide. If he throws that down the pipe straight, he may have some great results from it. He's been able to negate the pressure of Angulo with side-to-side -side movement. Yeah, so far, plan A for Cintron is working. Angulo is still coming at him, and uh, he's still there, and so is Cintron. He's still there, too. Plan A is still working. And Gulo seems like he's in more of a rush to try and connect with his punches. And Gulo goes southpaw here. Trying everything. I think this is another strategy by Angulo. Seeing if something else works because what he was doing in the last few rounds wasn't working. Cintron just kind of circling away. And Angulo not able to land any punches. He switched to southpaw, but hasn't really done much with it. 
some loose tape on the left glove of Angulo. This is where Citron should be throwing his right hand because Angulo is showing him a different, different look. Angulo finally got the fight in a corner. Citron moves out of danger. And Citron was scoring there. What a good fight. End of round seven. On Monday, June 15th, it's the premiere of the new HBO series, Joe Buck Live. Oh, excuse me, June 13th, Miguel Cotto takes on Joshua Clotty from Madison Square Garden in New York here on HBO. Then it's on June 15th, the premiere of Joe Buck Live. Debut episode featuring athletes and celebrities living together to talk about being a sports star in the era of 24-hour news cycle. You don't want to miss it. Good luck, Joe. Welcome to the HBO family. Could you uh, get it for me? I can't get it started. Which one? Is that ours? Come on, let's go. Well, Alfredo Angulo, at least on our cards, down through seven. As we begin round number eight, scheduled for 12, and Cintron shoots a right hand to start the eighth round. Well, there's no way in a, any kind of a fair judging that Angulo could possibly not be down on this on the cards. Compared to Harold's cards and Angulo's corner, the way they see it, I've been generous to Angulo, and I have Cintron way up. You can make a case maybe for two rounds for Angulo. No. Maybe even three, but uh, that's still that, that's still uh, puts him down on the cards. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman, HBO's Boxing After Dark, Kermit Cintron, and Alfredo Angulo battling it out in the 154-pound weight class. Andre Berto still to come in our main event. Angulo digs a hook to the body. Cintron has used the jab effectively, negotiated distance well in this fight, keeping the hard-charging Angulo away. Is this fight about to turn? Right hand by Cintron going away. Right hand caught Cintron on the chin. Diffused most of the power behind it. What about Cintron here in round eight? Well, both fighters are a bit weary. Cintron's a little bit weary. He's changing his game plan a bit. He's, he's staying close, Angolo. I love what Cintron's doing here, Lennox, because he is a little fatigued. Angulo's having a pretty good round, kind of chasing him down. And so to break Angulo's momentum, Cintron's pushing him backwards. But isn't he putting himself in harm's way where he could get hurt? For the, the fastest? The, yeah, well, you know, the, the thing he's doing wrong is he's got his left hand down while he's in close to Angulo, which you can't do. Left hand by Cintron. He's got to keep both hands up. Angulo blocks some of that left by Cintron before it could deliver full force. There's the loose tape on the left glove of Angulo they'll have to clip off. So they'll negotiate the last 11 seconds of round number eight. Tape is fixed. Better round for Angulo, although Cintron has landed some quality punches of his own. Through eight here on HBO's Boxing After Dark from Hollywood, Florida. Okay? Okay? 
No, you can sit down a little bit with him in the inside. He cannot fight you in the inside. But look, in the inside, you just got to move your pants. That's all you got to do is just throw punches. Every punch don't have to be hard. Remember I told you? Look, when they close, you just can't let him take off. You got to be the one to take off. Take off and punch and step around. Give me some water. Come on, son. Son, you got to wake up. You got to wake up now. These are your rounds. You can still do it. Come on, we need to do it. We're losing the bout. You got to press. We've got to press. Well, in the last round, according to CompuBox, Angulo threw a fight high 102 punches in the round, landed 33 of them. And landed a high 23 power shots in the round. Good round for Angulo. As we start round number nine. Scheduled for 12. Junior middleweights, 154 pounds. Angulo said that he runs a mile for every round. He said for this fight, he ran 15 miles. Remember, he's never been past 10 rounds. This is scheduled for 12. We're in round nine. Only been past six once. Angulo blocked most of that right hand from Cintron with his wrist. Lennox, an assessment of what you see of both fighters. We'll start with Angulo right now here in the early part of round nine. Well, Angulo knows that he's behind, and he's picking up the pace. He's trying all kinds of things. He's turning southpaw. He's trying to, the quick step. But nothing seems to be working right now because Citron is doing what he's been doing from round one, and that's boxing. It, and it, it's working for him, so there's nothing he can change about that. All he has to do is keep it up. Lennox, as you were saying that, one thing that maybe Angulo is starting to focus more on is the body. He made a concerted effort just then to throw several hard shots to the body and keep throwing there. And that might be his best shot at this point. Yeah, he can see that Citron's becoming fatigued. And all good boxers know you keep on hitting that body and the head will fall. But Citron's in good shape and, um, you know, his body, body tells that. Looks like He-Man out there. Even though Cintron is a former belt holder at welterweight, Lennox, is he battling any kind of self-doubt in his head? Well, I think he uh, he did have a little bit of doubt, but that, that came out of play. In the third round, it seemed like he really picked up the pace and became relaxed and more comfortable in there and started to box. Hey, go box and go! Go hold and go! And that box. stuff wouldn't even be an issue had he not lost to Margarito twice. And there's now a cloud of suspicion over all of Margarito's wins of recent years, including the two against Cintron, whether they were legit or not. Whether Margarito's hand wraps weren't coated in plaster as they were for the Shane Mosley fight. And if they were, that's really a shame because Cintron was an undefeated, hot, hot fighter at the time of the Margarito loss. We are through nine. Still to come in our main event. He currently holds a belt at 140 pounds. He's trying for one at 147. Born in Columbia, now fighting right here out of Hollywood, Florida. Juan Urengo, 21 and 1. 16 knockouts. He'll be battling Andre Berto. The undefeated 25-year-old who currently holds one of the 147-pound titles. That's coming up in our main event, working with trainer Evangelista Cotto. Their fourth fight together. Our main event here on Boxing After Dark. So Angulo and Cintron ready to embark upon the 10th round. There have been no knockdown so far in the fight. A little timeout now before we start round number 10. Again, they're working on some of the tape on the gloves of Angulo. 
All right, Harold Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Bob, 87, 84, six rounds to three, Kermit Sintron. You know, Bob, this fight may come down to who's in better shape. I got to tell you, Kermit Sintron's mouth was wide open, and around nine, he was holding like mad. I mean, the guy really looks physically tired. He's been fighting a real good fight. He's been moving back, keeping Angulo at a distance, using that left jab and dropping that right hey, hand hey, down hey. on him. Go also go scoring go with go real go good go left hooks. Go but go. I thought that Angulo put on enough pressure to steal rounds eight and nine, make it a little bit closer. But still in all, Sintron with a big early lead, six to three, Kermit Sintron. And the corner of Angulo told him in between rounds, you need a knockout to win. That's the feeling in the Angulo camp as Cintron pumps out that jab to keep the charging Angulo away. You know, Cintron's in terrific shape, and if he looks fatigued, if he is fatigued, it's not just that he's fighting a high-volume fight against a pressure fighter in Angulo. It's that he is not as relaxed in the ring as Angulo. As we mentioned earlier, he doesn't seem as natural. It doesn't flow from him as naturally. And that kind of tension can wear a fighter out. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, if you're tense going in the ring, that's why you have to really learn and be relaxed out there. Because part of your tension is going to take away a lot of your energy. Should Cintron go on to win this fight, it could do wonders for his self-confidence and his kind of temperament and emotional state going into future fights. And maybe relax him because he's never really emotionally recovered from what happened against Margarita. Right, exactly. And then after the... Margarito fiasco with the wrappings. Uh, it's something that has lingered, although Cintron doesn't really talk about it. It's something that sits in the back of his mind. Cintron can't afford to be too relaxed in there. Hands are coming down a bit. He should really keep them up. This is an important time to keep them up in the last few rounds. Cintron has done a good job of using angles. Good little right hook inside by Cintron. Angulo charges right back. Angulo goes southpaw. Really good left hand to the body from Angulo. Maybe this is the reason why Cintron's keeping his hands a little bit lower. One of the things that Cintron has done pretty well in this fight to this point is he's never allowed Angulo to put punches together. It's one shot and then Cintron's been able to kind of move away. Well, he's, well, he smothered them and you can see he's paying attention to his body. He's keeping that elbow down. He's very aware that Angulo's trying to hit him on that left side. Thus far, Cintron has not let Angulo take the play away. No. Listen, the guy is just trying to come on. He's trying to steal the last 10 seconds. You just keep See the punches okay? through 10 rounds. Listen, Cintron has been busier. He's All landed 49 more punches, 145 Listen. power shots in this fight to Angulo's 120 power shots. As we take a look at the face of Alfredo Angulo, he's trying to put the pressure on, but has not been able to because Cintron has used enough movement and jab work to keep Angulo from getting a rally going. The uppercut and the hook on the inside. Hook up tight and then on the body. Come on, son. Come on, son. That's a strategy. And for Alfredo Agulo, this will be the first time in his career that he will fight in a 12th round. He's got 10 rounds once, stopping Andre Tsurkan last year in California in the 10th round. For Cintron, this is the third consecutive fight now in which he's gone past 10. He had two 12-round fights, one against Lovemore and Du, and then the draw against Sergio Martinez last time out. See, Cintron did a wise move there. He got into a clinch, and then he moved Angulo all the way back to the ropes. That's giving him enough room to move around and giving him time. Long right hand from Angulo. Another right hand from Angulo. No, we see Harold's scorecard, and he has Angulo catching up on points. But 
still, and Angulo is fighting better in recent rounds, but still, Simshron hasn't let the fight turn into a route, into just exactly the kind of fight Angulo wants. He's still been able to control more or less what is going on in the ring, even if it has been a little less over the last couple rounds. Hasn't let Angulo get the momentum going where he lands a series of combinations. It's usually one and done, and he's used movement, Lennox, to avoid that, like right there. And the movement that he's using is very effective. He, you, know, you know, in these last couple rounds, you know, he's, he's a bit tired. He's trying to use up the time clock as much as possible and use up the ring. And yet box as he's doing it. He's not in survival mode. Uh, he's still landing good punches. He's not fighting desperately, Cintron. He's fighting more or less under control. Cintron's speed is very... Oh, and, and Angulo took exception to that shoulder of Cintron into his chest. Cintron's speed is very apparent in this fight, especially against Angulo. He's f way, way faster than him. Did Angulo wait too long to pick up the pace? Or was it Cintron's skill level and movement that never enabled him to? There's that jab. That jab is still going. The question's gonna be if this fight goes the distance how the first, second, and fifth rounds were scored. It's a great point. Remember, they're added up individually. It's not looked at as a whole. The tally sheet, each round is scored independently. Time, time, time. If you looked at it as a whole so far, Cintron will be winning the fight, definitely. Forget the body, forget the body. Go for the job. This is the last one. We need to do everything. We need to do all in this round. Last round, we shake hands. Okay. Look at me. No. Do you want this fight? Yes, yes. Okay. I don't want to. I do not want to see you down there grabbing. You understand? I want to. You box like you box these 11 fucking rounds. You understand? This is the last round. All they've got to do is keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. And use the stiff jab. Listen to me. Listen to me. But throw it all, 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 with all, with all. Work it, work it, work it all. You've got to put everything into it. Don't look for the body, look for the head. Well, Alfredo Angulo, his corner thinks they've got to go out and get a knockout to win it. How will Cintron deal with the pressure? He starts off with a jab to the midsection. Cintron's done a good job in this fight of keeping it in the middle of the ring where he wanted it. Pumps out the jab just to keep Angulo away. Right hand over the top. Angulo caught it at the end. And Angulo bait Cintron into a slugfest over the last two minutes. This is the point where I would Citron needs to just move around. He's basically won the fight. Throw that jab. But Lance, can you really take that for granted? No, not really. I'm, I'm saying throw the jab, score the point, throw the combination. Go, he's go. doing exactly what ready, he's ready, doing go. right now. Incidentally, among the other things Cintron has shown tonight, Cintron got hit with a right to the ear. That's right. He's absorbed some tremendous shots from Angulo. He has been hit clean a bunch in this fight. And he's responded to the punishment very, very well so far. Both trade big shots, and then Cintron dives in again the hole. Last time, you hold him, 
take a point away. Let's go. Box. Cintron told next time I'm taking a point away for holding. I don't think Cintron's committed that girl, in rules infraction enough to warrant a point deduction. Cintron gets out of that corner as Angulo presses forward. Cintron's keeping his left hand low. Eats a right hand. Trying to get away from trouble. Pumps out a couple of jabs and fires a right hand over the top. Angulo answers with a right of his own. Oh, right hand by Cintron right hand again. Angulo goes back to work. Left hand from Cintron. Final seconds of the fight. Right hand from Cintron. There's the bell to end it. What a fight. Good fight by Kermit Citron. Really did what, he, did what he needed to do and he boxed and he really came alive in this fight. A tremendous performance. He also answered the critics in this fight, as Vitaly Klitschko did against you, Lennox, when you fought. And the criticism of Vitaly was he didn't have heart. And it wasn't that Vitaly didn't have heart, it's that the European press never demanded it of him. Let's take a look at the judges who will decide this fight. Mike Pernick from Florida, 45 title fights is notable. Quintana's decision over Paul Williams. He scored at 116-112 for Quintana. Mike Ross, no notable fights on his resume. He hails from Florida as well. And Rocky Young from Florida, 15 title fights in the Tarver win against Johnson, the second fight. He scored it a two-point decision for Tarver. Harold, your final card. 115, 113, seven rounds to five, Kermit Cintron. I gotta tell you, Bob, I thought that Alfredo Angulo got into his game in round eight, put on a lot of pressure, probably won rounds eight to 11, but I gotta tell you, in round 12, Kermit Cintron showed a lot of guts, a lot of heart, landed some nice right hands, and I think he pulled out the fight. He certainly had an awfully big lead going, you know, going into that seventh round. And, you know, I think he piled up enough points in the early rounds to win a decision, a close one. Seven to five, 115, 113, Kermit Cintron. All right, what did the judges have it scored? Here with the man with the answers, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. All three judges scored about exactly the same, 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner, Kermit Sintron. You saw the nod from Angulo. Even he agreed with the decision. Kermit Sintron has pulled off a mild upset here, handing Alfredo Angulo the first loss of his career with a solid, disciplined effort. And winning a unanimous decision, 116-112 on all three judges' scorecards as Angulo heads to the locker room in defeat for the first time. And for Kermit Cintron, win number 31 and some real defining moments based on the fact that he had a game plan, he stuck to it, and even when things got a little bit dicey, he found a way to stick with the plan. And, you know, this all comes from training camp. He said he had a very long training camp, and the training camp was, it was good. He was happy about it because, you know, even in the fighters meeting, he looked very relaxed, very calm, calmer than he's usually been. So, uh, you know, I knew there was a good vibe for this particular fight. Great performance by Kermit Cintron in really a pivotal fight for him as far as his career. And there's the long walk back for Alfredo Angulo, who loses 
a unanimous decision. 116, 112 on all three judges' scorecards. Never got into his rhythm. His corner kept exhorting him to get busier, throw more punches. But I think a lot of it had to do with the work of Cintron not allowing Angulo to fight his fight and ever allow this fight to get on the ropes. And the collar comes off and an L gets hung on El Perro. Final punch numbers in the fight. You see that Cintron goes over the 1,000 punch mark. He was busier. Both landed at 29%. They both threw nearly the same amount of power punches. 416 for Cintron, 414 for Angulo. Cintron wound up landing 12 more power punches in the fight. So when you take a look at punch zone and the 316 connects, you see 130 right on the chin. That right hand to the ear was very effective. Angulo was able to start working the body, but of those 50 that he worked the body with that left hand, too little too late, Lennox, in the fact that it started too late in the fight. He did not concentrate on Cintron's body until it was later in the fight. And to be fair, he couldn't catch Cintron's body uh, in the early rounds. Later on, when Cintron started to slow down a little bit, that's when he was susceptible to uh, the body punches. So that's where he really got in the later rounds. Max Kellerman is with the winner, Kermit Cintron. Congratulations, Kermit, on, a, on an outstanding performance. Where does this fight rate among all in your professional career? Yeah, uh, uh, Max, honestly, to be honest with you, this is probably my best performance to date in my career. You know, uh, we, we, we had uh, eight weeks of training camp, and Ronnie, Brian, and Creed put me through hell in the Houston boxing gym at Savannah's gym, and I'll uh, tell you what, man, I give, I give credit uh, to my team. Ronnie, Brian, Creed, and Josh Rubin. You got a good team, Kermit, but let's give you some credit now. You had to fight the fight. You said before the fight that you didn't have anything to prove to anyone, just to yourself. But you proved a lot of stuff to a lot of folks out there tonight. How do you feel about that now? You know, uh, my good friends back home, my wife, my friend Jerry, and my team, you know, they always tell me, you know, forget about the critics, forget about the rest of the people. Think about yourself, go in there, and do what you do best. And I showed it tonight. I still got to work a little bit on some stuff. I'm still uh, keeping the bending down a little bit. Um, I'm working on that. Uh, it's going to take some time. But uh, I think I showed that I could box tonight. Certainly did. Is this redemption in a way for the Margarito fights where you feel, as many surmise, that you weren't really on a level playing field with Margarito in those fights. Angulo fights a lot like Margarito. Is this redemption in some way for those fights for you? No, not at all. I'm just, I was just, you know, the past is the past. I'm the future, and I showed it tonight. What now is the future? Is it a junior middleweight? Is it at welterweight? What are the plans? Whatever my promoter uh, puts out there for me, it doesn't matter, 147 or, one, or 154. You know, um, I feel great in both weight classes. I still feel that I can still become a world champion at 147, but I definitely can feel that at 154, I can be a world champion too. Congratulations again, again Kermit. Outstanding performance. Thank you. Kermit Cintron gets win number 31. Knocked off line and two losses against Margarito. Nearly knocked off the tracks against Martinez, but he's back on track with a defining win against the previously undefeated Alfredo Angulo with a unanimous decision victory.